Mike, I'm actually going to turn the microphone back over to you. Uh, so, so Mike and I have known each other for <laughs> two decades, Mike, I think two decades plus. Um, we've worked together in various roles and for the past six years, you and I have been working together here at the EDMC. Um, I don't think we gave Mike a proper introduction at the beginning. Mike is the CEO and co-founder of the EDM Council. And, and I'm absolutely pleased to turn the mic back over to my colleague and friend, who's gonna take us through some of the exciting updates and programs and member features that are taking place at the council. But before I turn it over the mic, let me wish Mike Meriden a very happy birthday today. <laughs> I, I won't share how old he is, but it's one of those milestones. Uh, what is it, 29 again? I think it's 29 again. So, so well, that, congrats. That, that would be a, a fun milestone, John. <laughs> Have a great birthday. Mike, take it away. Our age is all a state of mind, John. So uh, there you go. Um, and, and thank you, everyone. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, manage moving forward on the slides. I'll just check with Yolan if I can advance the slide. Okay, good, it is working. Wonderful, so um, again, welcome everyone. Um, this will be a very interesting and high action segment. Uh, I have quite a few slides, but I'll be brisk and I'm gonna invite five speakers to add in two to three minute uh, segments on each of these topics. So for those that are not familiar fully with the EDM Council, this is an excellent starting slide because it essentially gives the full picture of what the council does, starting first with the mission statement, which is to elevate the practice of data management and analytics, and to do that through the advocacies you see on the left side of the page. Everything from best practices, standards, training and certification, research and benchmarking. Uh, many members may not be fully aware, but many of the global regulators are part of the EDM council. They both use the frameworks and training programs and also uh, participate in some of our other best practice activities. And then finally, uh, our objective is to do everything through the network of the community. And every framework we work on, every best practice guidance comes really from two things, the neutrality of the council. And number two is the network of all the professionals that contribute. Our formal definition, by the way, we are a 501c6 nonprofit trade association. And since our inception in 2005, the organization has grown significantly to represent uh, all the major geographies, uh, over 200 member companies and 10,000 professionals. I'll go on to the next slide, which is, this is uh, a good illustration. Like every company in the world, when uh, March earlier this year came along and everyone was going, well, what will the pandemic mean to our business model? We had similar concerns at the EDM Council as to what would happen with a membership organization and renewals and people wanting to be involved. This has actually been uh, a record setting year for the EDM Council, which is every company as it's pivoting its business model to how do they digitally serve their customer. Uh, it's really put a greater importance on data and analytics. So these are some of the new logos that have recently joined many in the last several months. You'll see a few things about this. It's not a full list. It's just a, a, a list of some of the uh, highlights. You'll see uh, major financial services firms continuing to join like Banco Santander. Uh, you'll see ANZ in Australia, but also another very interesting thing. Major digital companies have come on board. We're very happy to have Microsoft keynote with Jane. Uh, Microsoft has joined the EDM Council. Also Google to come on board with the EDM Council to uh, to help us on things like big topics such as cloud. Additionally, the council now is serving other industries. Over the last year and a half, you'll see some new logos opening new chapters, notably AstraZeneca for life sciences and healthcare, Schneider Electric for sustainable energy. Very recently, one of the largest telecommunication companies in the world, Verizon has joined as well. So more to come as we expand the agenda of the council, on this next slide, you'll see that uh, this is our attempt to get all the logos, uh, if I back it up one, all onto one page. Um, and of course, uh, this is getting to be a little bit harder to do, but I think it's a great example of a lot of companies highly interested in data and analytic programs. Now, a, a, one of the early reports that we did uh, this year was our biannual benchmark. It is a 75 page report where we go and ascertain and look at the industry as to what is the state of data and analytics. This is one page out of the report that's a very interesting observation, which is what is the scope of the CDO? And you'll see that a very interesting statistic came here. 
which is 52% of CDOs have a responsibility for data analytics and of them 42% to concern themselves with issues like data ethics. So this scope change is something that has resulted in us augmenting and improving and expanding the EDM Council's best practice framework, which is data, excuse me, which is the DCAM, which is the data management capability assessment model. And what you'll see here is that we brought together a, a group of companies cross jurisdiction, uh, also cross uh, some are uh, central banks, by the way, others are consulting firms to help us develop now that the CDO function has responsibility for analytics, let's add into the original seven components of DCAM. And DCAM was originally published, the first version, in December of 2014. And it's represented by the seven components you see on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen is the new analytics component that was published this October. This work group helped build that particular capability and in fact, these are the seven capabilities to running a comprehensive and sustainable analytics function. And underneath these seven capabilities are 30 sub capabilities. So members have now the opportunity, since all members are licensed to use DCAM, to download the framework and you can now examine your best practices for your data supply chain, the original seven components. And you can now also scorecard your analytics functions. And you can do one or the other. That becomes your decision and your option. So that's a great uh, update to the council's agenda. Another part of the agenda is the expansion of training courses. So today, thousands of people have been trained on DCAM. This is the two-day agenda for the practitioner's course. We're delivering this. This year alone, uh, we've delivered about 40 plus courses. Uh, well over a thousand people, and this being delivered through a combination of in-person, excuse me, courses originally, but now all virtually delivered in two six-hour days. The other thing is that these courses are also can be delivered just to a single company. So we offer both open courses each quarter by all the major regional time zones. And if you'd like a course and you have five or 10 students within your organization, we can de uh, deliver this directly. Again, any person that completes a DCAM course will receive a digital badge, and this is an accredited uh, credential. What I'd like to do uh, in a moment is introduce one of our first guest speakers. You'll see also all of the content of DCAM is updated and digitally available off of the EDM Connect platform. I'd like to introduce uh, Philip Dutton. Philip is the uh, co-founder uh, for Solidatus, a, a key partner firm with the EDM Council to give us updates on some of the digital models now available to members. Philip? Great, and, and thank you very much, Mike, and thanks very much for, for your time today. Um, yes, yeah, so wanting to, to touch on, on the, the great work that's been done with the, the EDM Council around the, the Solidatus and, and the, the applicability and the availability of not only DCAM um, as, as the the framework that has currently been modeled against BCBS 239 and GDPR, but actually working with the council on, on the cloud data management strategies to making more and more of these models available. So the, the Solidatus platform is, is available for all of the members to use to see DCAM in its entirety, to be able to run analytics against it and to model it into their organization. So not only looking at sort of DCAM um, as a as a framework, but as a living framework, where you can actually link into the relationships within the organization. And with that, we've been producing not only sort of some, some new capability models, or the council's been producing some new capability models around um, the cloud data management, as well as unstructured data, looking at moving some of the, the DCAM reference material into, into new languages, like you know, into, into Spanish, et cetera. Um, and so Solidaris is, is really trying to enable people to interact with this data. We are backed by a, a graph technology like has been talked a lot about sort of through um, today's event, but actually the, the graph that we have is, is very unique because it, it offers a, a temporal aspect. So you can see things over time. So as Jag mentioned, you know, with the, the journey that, that the organizations are going through in a move to cloud strategy, it's, it's how do we see that and how does it evolve over time? So seeing as we have in this particular model here, some of the privacy regulations mapped to internal policy within an organization mapped to internal processes and then mapped onto the data management capabilities that you have and then being able to score those and, and, and to 
to actually assess those against DCAM. So you can have an end-to-end -end holistic view of your organization all the way from regulation through policy, through process in, into the, uh, you know, the underlying DCAM framework or to cloud data management framework. So hopefully creating a, a much more clear and transparent um, view of the organization through multiple dimensions. Thank you, Philip. Uh, and to uh, if any member would like to access all of the digital models, they're available through EDM Connect. If you're not registered on EDM Connect, you can visit the homepage and you just need to use your corporate email and it would uh, allow you to get access. In fact, this is a really interesting uh, picture because on the far left is the full 200 pages of the GDPR privacy regulation. And you'll see it's digitally mapped all the way into DCAM uh, and it's bi-directional. So uh, companies that invest into doing a DCAM assessment can see where are they either in gap or what are they compliant in as it relates to uh, data privacy regulation. Other maps for other regulations that are privacy and risk oriented are being made available as we go into the new year. So uh, Phil, this is a great capability and uh, we're excited for uh, members to see more value out of the DCAM and these digital models. Super, on to a, a new update topic. Uh, this is uh, Open Knowledge Graph and FIBO, and we've had several panels today cover the financial industry business ontology, a little bit about the agenda and why this is important. This is actually contributed by one of our earlier sponsors, Cambridge Semantics, and it's out of a recent Gartner report that Graph is a top five transformational architecture and capability in the marketplace going forward. And we've actually had Gartner speak directly about this in more detail. What the council has done is open up a series of services to help accelerate the marketplace. The first is, of course, for many years, we've been curating the open source of the financial industry business ontology. You can now visit the EDM council website and very easily download and use this within your operation. Number two, we've also made it available to all of major vendor partners, and you'll see a list of companies that are vendors that are using FIBO as an accelerator to their implementations. So a very exciting set of capabilities that this is helping support as well. The third is, is we also have training courses. And in that regard, I'd like to introduce Dean Alamang. Dean is a senior advisor with the EDM Council, and also as mentioned a little bit earlier, an Amazon bestseller with his book, Working Ontologist. So Dean, if you could help maybe uh, update the audience on the graph course that's now available that you've helped architect. Yeah, thanks, Mike, I'd love to. So um, you see the sort of high level agenda of the course. We've been developing this for a couple of years and a lot of it comes out of the, uh, the approach in Semantic Web for the working ontologist. So it really connects into that. It's <clears throat> the idea is to make knowledge graphs uh, accessible both to business users and to the technologists um, in your organization. A theme that we heard again and again throughout the uh, panel sessions so far in this session is that there is a, a need for having education in our organization, uh, not just technical education to know how the technology works, but also the change in the mindset of the organization to start thinking about data as a shared resource rather than as something that you put into little silos. In fact, I, if there's any theme that I heard in every talk, I think it was that theme that uh, we there's a cultural change and we need to sort of massage intuitions around that. So we've aimed uh, this course on the one hand to talk about standards and technology, but also to talk about the use cases and the perspectives on data. That's why that's really the first sub bullet point there to massage these perspectives and show how the technology fits into that. So the, uh, do we have the, the actual days of our next courses on here, Mike, on the next slide? Mm -hmm. I think? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. So yeah, we actually have a course coming up in the uh, Europe and Asia time zone uh, very soon, beginning of next week. And there are still seats available for that. And then a week later, we have uh, the course available here in the United States time zones, and there are seats available for that as well. So this is uh, the, the council is dedicated to advancing this technology on an industry level. And that's really what this course is aimed at. And it's aimed at uh, multiple industries. A lot of our examples come from finance, of course, because that's where our roots are. But an awful lot of this work also shows up 
in life sciences, agriculture, media, and a lot of other industries. And so we draw upon those as well. Okay, um, I think it's back to you now, Mike. Yes, Dean, um, but stay on because uh, yeah. I'm gonna have you help me with another sure. introduction. And uh, just two comments about the course. First, for everyone listening in, this is for both business and technical people. And we're addressing both audiences. Uh, there's not a prerequisite but what you will get after the two day experience is a solid grounding on all the fundamentals from everything from the business case to present to the board, all the way to the use cases uh, that evidence how this gets implemented. Uh, it's also agnostic of any specific technology. So it really gives you a good grounding. Oh, okay. And the badge, Mike, remember the badge. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that. That's the last part here. We have a digital badge that you will receive that'll add to your credentials as a professional. So uh, again, if you'd like to register, just visit the EDM Council website. You'll see a tab for uh, training. The other thing I wanna cover at this point is that another resource, in fact, we have an entire panel right after this to discuss this, which is a shared lab. So the EDM Council, uh, through the leadership of Harsh Sharma, he'll be introduced in a moment, a senior advisor with global expertise on graph technology. It's all about how can the council help bring together technology, training, data sets, and speed up examples of commercial value being generated. In this instance, one of our very first use cases for the lab is for fraud and anti-money laundering. So we'll cover that in more detail, but just wanted to alert everyone on that. So uh, Dean, I'm gonna turn it back to you to introduce one of our new partners and new members to the council, data.world, and our next speaker. Thank you, Mike. I'm really excited that data.world has joined the council. They are leaders in data dissemination and sharing um, in a number of industries. And uh, they've been uh, their public benefit corporation, as you see here. So they've not just incorporated as a for-profit company, which they are, but a public benefit corporation actually has a publicly stated mission. And their mission is so much in alignment with the goals of the EDM Council that I'm really excited that we've managed to uh, formalize that relationship. And um, I'm waiting for that number in the second bullet to hit 1 million because there's going to be a it should be a party. A party. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to say a, a, a slight swear word there, but yeah, a, a heck of a party. There we go. Um, that I'm looking forward to, and they're on their way there. And indeed, uh, fastest growing uh, company in the uh, category. And uh, the whole point of this is to make your data findable and transparent. And uh, I'm really uh, proud to be working with them. And our next speaker is my friend and colleague, Brian Jacob. Do we have a slide for him? I forget. I, I will just say Brian is the uh, CTO and a co-founder of data.world. So uh, Brian, if uh, you're on board here, if you could turn on your camera, we're off to the races to uh, allow yep. you to brief the uh, audience. I'm here. Hello. Looking Great. Looking forward to hearing you have to say, Brian. Yes, thank you both for the for the warm intro. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, so you know, Dean's already kind of covered this slide, uh, so I, I won't belabor this. I'll just you know say a little bit you know about the, the the you know the platform itself. It's a cloud native SaaS data catalog. It's all built on top of Knowledge Graph, all built to RDF and 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 standards to make data interchange as as easy and standard as possible. And you know, really focused from a user experience point of view on making every user of the catalog a valuable knowledge contributor back into the to, to the to the the corpus of knowledge um, you know we just recently joined the EDM council and we're thrilled to have done so it's we're, we're ramping up very quickly and engaging with the council as members uh, we've actually been working with the council not as members just as partners for a while uh, some of the courseware that you know that, that Mike referred to in the previous section and that being talked to is actually available through you know through our platform as well. If you go to data.world slash EDM council, you can see some of the you know examples and the actual actually we we syndicate the FIBO ontology there, make it available so you can query it directly there with with Sparkle and and see some kind of hands-on examples of how of, of how FIBO can be used. Uh, you know, some of those training courses use data.world uh, and we're, you know, really, really excited to get to participate in the, the cloud data management capabilities effort. Uh, you know, we are particularly leaning in on our area of interest, which is on the, in working with the information model on, on making sure that we have an interoperable information model for data cataloging across various vendors and implementations. 
Uh, and I'll just leave you with with this. You know, we've been really excited and 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 happy to see our you know our reception in both the the Forrester Wave and the Gartner Metadata Management Management Quadrant in the last year. So, if uh, you know any of this sounds interesting, I'd encourage you to go check uh, check those reports out and and please do reach out. And uh, thanks again, Mike and Dean. Thank you, Brian. Um, we're very excited uh, about our work with Data.World. And uh, I think as we head into 2021, uh, more to come, which is uh, great. So let me move on to the uh, next topic, which is e-learning, a very active part of the EDM Council agenda. And what you'll see here is uh, good news, more courses, more tracks available for companies and individuals. There are now nine certification tracks overall two certificate programs, uh, Certified Information Management Professional and also Certified Data Steward. These tracks are now backed by well over 50 courses and 200 hours of e-learning training and certification. It's everything from a fundamental course all the way up to advanced courses. And, and companies have an option. Uh, these are, are packages that are available. So they're costed and priced very economically for members. And you have the ability to procure single courses or groups of courses to cover certifying groups or departments of people. If you'd like to learn more about the certification programs for training uh, your team, just go ahead and visit the EDM Council website. A lot of the new courses have been very recently updated. The, the entire data science track was released earlier this 2020. Uh, some really excellent material there. In addition to that, um, what you'll see in the Council agenda is quite a few active member work groups. As mentioned it back at the, what's the special sauce of the council? It's the neutrality of the organization combined with bringing members together to focus on key topics. One of the ones that has recently started, uh, John has been leading this along with an excellent group is under environmental, social and governance data. This has become an area where trillions and trillions of dollars are now being invested by the largest companies in the world in assuring that the programs that they're investing into are compliant or working with environmental, social, and governance objectives. We've recently formed this group. It actually includes a very exciting group of companies that sort of represent the full supply chain of ESG data. Of course, the council will look at this through the lens of data management, which is how are companies reporting their information on annual reports and other filings? How are data companies aggregating this data and constructing data feeds. How is that data then being consumed by asset and wealth managers as they build their portfolios? And then finally, how do regulators perform their oversight functions in this highly developing marketplace? Of course, the council is gonna be looking at this from the lenses of both best practices and data standards. And there are great opportunities to innovate in those areas moving forward. If you're interested in this work group, you can join it through EDM Connect or reach out to John or myself, and we can help uh, bring your team involved into this discussion. The next work group, and this actually ends up being the largest work group the council has ran life to date, is the Cloud Data Management Work Group. You've heard it referred to several times during today's presentation, but to wind the clock back to about the April, May timeframe this year, a combination of Morgan Stanley, Refinitiv and Google approached the council for the possibility of forming a work group around cloud data management best practices with an objective of putting, you know, documenting the controls, the procedures all around so that the industry can accelerate cloud adoption, but do it in a way where the right controls would be in place to assure that this is done in a thoughtful and compliant mechanism. So this work group, um, to our surprise, has grown to be quite big and quite involved and has gotten quite a bit of attention. First, we reached out to the other major cloud providers. So you'll see that Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, and Microsoft Azure, along with Amazon Web Services, are all involved. Each have a half a dozen to a dozen engineers and around 30 or 40 plus financial services companies, all in different sectors throughout the world. Altogether, it's over 200 participants it's large enough where it's actually multi-tiered. There's, there's meetings uh, that are going on weekly. We're about halfway through building a framework that's architected similar and out of the playbook of DCAM, but in this instance, all around the controls and processes and technology that's needed to help execute in the cloud. 
In that regard, I'd like to introduce uh, another partner firm to the EDM Council, which is Finos, and their executive director, Gab Columbro. Uh, Gab, if, if you're on, go ahead and turn the camera on, and uh, I'm happy to advance the slides for you. Hey, Mike, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, cool. Nice to see you folks, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, yes, you can go on. Uh, I'm Gabriele Columbro, the Executive Director of Finas, the FinTech Open Source Foundation. Um, as Mike said, we've been uh, uh, collaborating or looking to collaborate with CDMC as we have, I think, a really great complementary uh, um, you know, proposition. We are a 501c6 nonprofit. Recently, we joined the Linux Foundation um, as the financial services umbrella for any type of open source and open standard based collaboration. Um, as you can see, we have representation from not only some of the uh, largest investment banks globally, uh, but we have over the years uh, grown representation from fintechs, from uh, more and more big tech, and more recently we also launched an associate members program whereby we are becoming the open source enabler for other consortia in the industry. Uh, you know, our bread and butter is to enable resolution of common industry problems through either open source collaboration or open standards. And so you can see here, there's, there's certainly, uh, at least in terms of vision, uh, in principle, a really good alignment here. Um, not only just one, one thing I would say at the previous slide, Mike, is we have about 40 projects out there. We'll talk about one of them that is probably very interesting for, hopefully very interesting for this audience. Um, and, you know, again, as a nonprofit, we are measured in the value that we produce out of our project, not just on our revenue. You want to move forward? Um, as I said, our goal is to drive open sourcing financial services. I think we made major inroads in the last two years, especially this year. We had uh, a, a huge amount of active contributions from our financial institutions, which I think it's something pretty uh, uh, unheard of only a few years ago. Um, we do help our members actively to uh, uh, become engaged in open source communities. So we do through our member success program. And of course, we help our projects uh, uh, being successful through our community leadership. Um, one point on our governance, um, as an open source community, we've always been very transparent. All of our work products are open source under the Apache 2 license, and we provide a very transparent governance. Everything is pretty much publicly archived. If you wanna go to the next one. As I mentioned, out of our 40 projects, um, some of them are, you know, your typical software components, some of them are open standards. Uh, one area where we're seeing major traction this year is our, uh, you know, within the area of working with regulators, uh, certainly what we call our cloud service certification project. This was a project that we started about a year ago, um, originally contributed by JP Morgan. Uh, it's very, in many ways, uh, very complementary to the work that has been done in the CDMC, and that's why we are, uh, uh, you know, exploring collaboration. Uh, the goal here is to create, again, codified controls uh, for, you know, testing regulatory compliance of the services provided by the main cloud service providers, and of course, having this test published out there. Again, uh, uh, very keen to continue the conversation here. Uh, maybe you want to go to the last slide. Uh, all I was going to say is, as an open source foundation, we think that there is value for each of the constituents of this industry, but it's a positive sum game. You know, doing the good for the industry through open source allows to drive your own goals as well. And so that's uh, my part, Mike. Thank you so much for your opportunity. Gab, thank you uh, very much as well. And uh, this is a really exciting uh, partnership we're working on together with Finos, where a combination of come Q2 next year, which is our target for delivering version one of the cloud data management framework, we'll have a uh, proper framework, good to go, usable by the industry. And then also the beginnings of series of tests that can be executed as open source tests to evidence compliance and that these controls are operating across multiple cloud providers. So uh, 
those two things coming together, I think will add a lot of value to accelerating companies and their journey. So with that, uh, on to the next topic. Uh, thanks again, Gab, and more to come in 2021, no doubt, which is great. A little bit about the EDM Council member forum, some other topics that we have that are open for members to join and get active in. One that I'd like to uh, actually bring in other speakers or actually two speakers up is the Women and Data Forum. So with no further ado, I'll open up the microphone on if your camera could be turned on to both uh, Marla Dance with TradeWeb and Andrea Ionello, both are co-chairs of the Women and Data effort uh, and are gonna provide some comments on the work group and what's being done. Uh, hi, thanks, Mike. Um, uh, my name is Marla Dans, and I'm the head of data governance at TradeWeb and co-chair of EDM Council's Women in Data Forum, along with my colleagues, Andrea Ionello and Dessa Glasser. Uh, the Women in Data Forum was established in 2019, so we've been around for just over a year. Um, and the mission is to support and promote women in the field of data and assist in development and promotion to more senior roles. And we do this by connecting, supporting, and promoting women in data by providing professional development opportunities through hosting and promoting events, sharing information, white papers, articles, blogs, and partnering with affinity groups like corporate women's networks. And we strive to make a meaningful contribution to solving data challenges by focusing discussions and content on current data topics like changes to LIBOR, cloud data management best practices, and others. And our global advisory board is structured into uh, global functional leads who set strategy and develop best practices for uh, managing our membership, our content and events, and uh, aligning with different affinity groups. Um, as well as we also have global leadership established in three regions, including Americas, Asia, and Europe. And those groups are looking to build out their committees as well. The next slide. Okay, so here are some highlights from the past 12 months. Uh, in just over one year, our group has grown to over 200 members globally. Um, all of our advisory board leads are in place and planning and building out their volunteer committees. We also have our Women in Data webpage on EDM Connect and LinkedIn established for membership communication. Uh, and you can also read about all our senior members uh, through our quarterly spotlight series, including interviews and biographies published on EDM Connect. So far this year, we've done these three. Uh, Andrew, Jody, and Sarabi are all chief data officers in their firms, and the fourth quarter is in progress. And finally, we hosted eight uh, events globally in 2020, pivoting to online as everyone else did, uh, most of them being content-based with panel speakers or fireside chats. But one of our most popular events was Women in Data Zoom Happy Hour hosted out of New York in October. This was a pure networking and socializing event and it was really well received. So we had 80 registered, 45 attended, we leveraged breakout rooms for small group conversations, which provided an excellent opportunity to make those personal connect connections, which we're all really missing. Uh, and then we came back together for a custom Zoom Jeopardy game, which was a lot of fun. And we, of course, we support bringing your own cocktail. So as you can see, Andrew went all out with his frozen margarita. Uh, and so we look forward to, uh, you know, setting up more of these uh, uh, Zoom happy hours across regions and time zones, which is not something we would have done prior to COVID. So uh, we want to make the most out of our current situation. Thanks, Next Mama. slide. Um, does uh, Andrea want to make comments or? Um, I, we... I just wanted to say, Mike, that um, and thank you, Marla. That was fantastic. We're not um, exclusive to women, so we we welcome right. anyone on the phone um, who wants to join women at uh, women and men. Uh, to please uh, come on board. We, we have a lot of stuff we want to accomplish and we, we welcome everybody. Right, well, Andrea and Marla, first of all, thank you from the EDM Council. This is a really important agenda for the council to support uh, the professional development of women in data and analytics positions. Uh, and so we, uh, we look forward to the expanding agenda going into the new year. And thank you for all of your uh, support so far uh, earlier this year. Thank you, Mike. Great. Thank you. 
Well, good. We um, had one more slide. <laughs> but oh, go, yeah, ahead. So that. go ahead. <laughs> Uh, sorry, this was just uh, our America's leadership page, and it's just meant to indicate uh, that our America's leadership is actually based out of Toronto and uh, led by Donna Radicki, uh from RBC Capital Markets and Ali Harris uh, from Scotiabank. So uh, they did an inaugural kickoff this year and are planning quarterly events, the mentoring program, and looking to expand into U.S. regions and, and follow EDM councils leadership into South America. So there's our uh, global leadership page. So if you're interested in uh, joining or volunteering, uh, please reach out through the page. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Marla. Thank you, Andrea. So a couple of final uh, points. A new forum the council will be launching, in fact, led by uh, John with my support, will be a global CDO data leader forum. Uh, this will be launched in uh, Q1, so more to come on that. Again, it'll be another way of bringing to, uh, together leaders in data management and work with them on agenda topics into the new year. A couple of remi re remaining items. First, uh, some good news on EDM Connect. Uh, it's now over 5,000 registered users worldwide. You may ask, well, what can I use EDM Connect for? Really three simple things. One is to access 15 years of library resources from the council. You can directly download them. All you need is your corporate email uh, as a member. And you can also join as a guest and get access to materials as well. Number two, you can connect to any other member worldwide by interest or by function. And then finally, all of our work groups and interest groups are all available online. So you can join them, see the materials and actually uh, enter in uh, comments on discussion boards. So uh, a new release of EDM Connect has come live in the last two days. So that's good news. If you'd like to access it, just go and visit the EDM Council homepage at the very top of the screen at edmcouncil.org. Uh, it says connect to EDM Connect. If you're registered, you type in your login and password. If you're not registered, use your corporate email. And in a few minutes, you set up your profile and you're off to the races. And here's some of the examples. This is the new women in data group in the new version of EDM Connect. Data ethics is another interest group that's up and running. You'll see all of the library resources. You can directly download new materials on DCAM, the analytics component, data quality metrics, and more. And then also the key work groups. The cloud data management work group is now live and operating, and the ESG work group. So you can read about these work groups, see if they apply to you and your team, and you can actually join directly on EDM Connects. So all that functionality is available. And you can, uh, from that, pick your options out and get a direct feed that matches your interest. And then finally, another resource the council has made available right off the homepage is a gallery of webinar. We've, we've done about one a, a week for the last uh, 30, 40 plus weeks this year. So any topic that you'd like to get a 40 minute primer on or 50 minutes, you can search the gallery and watch it uh, at a lunch break and get educated on a particular topic. So John, um, Covered a lot, been close to being on time. I will uh, turn it back to you. Michael and, uh, and, and your uh, guests did a fantastic job. Mike, thanks so much.